All right, so here we go, Friday before spring break. Where we left off last time was we had started to go through the materials for the Joust project, uh, thrown out ideas for what we thought needed to happen in the project. And uh, I have a specific direction I want to move with that today. Now, uh, what we need to do is we need to start turning our brainstorming into something closer to C++ terms, or the way I would phrase it is closer to object-oriented terms, because the next stage is not necessarily specific to C++, and that there are a number of object-oriented languages, so we could ultimately develop this in any number of languages. Uh, but the, the, the common theme between several of these languages that I want to get at today is the idea that we are taking an object-oriented approach uh, to uh, designing a solution to this problem that we're trying to figure out. And this is in contrast with a, a procedural or a functional approach or a, a functional decomposition approach, any of those terms you may have heard. Uh, and that's an approach that I'm not necessarily covering Certainly not today. Um, the, as an aside, the um, what was it? The, when I did kind of the the in class interactive, not well interactive. The me walking through the process of creating a sheet of graph paper, and uh, that there really wasn't a design in that, in that I was coding it from the get go. But the process I was using was more of a functional decomposition process, right? I was ultimately identifying common functionality that I could put into functions and then and then call from elsewhere in the code. Uh, so I just say that to contrast it with the approach we'll be taking today. Uh, prior to me getting into that, uh, does anyone have any questions about either the project or anything else? Okay. I would then like to start with, uh, let me get the secret word out of the way. So now everyone's going to write this down and walk out the door. <laughs> A sophist. I don't remember, I couldn't recall whether I'd given this word before or not. So if I have, then uh, if you don't recall it, then good. So I certainly don't recall it. And if it was the same word, it wouldn't matter. All right, so quite frequently you hear it nowadays referred to as, as a person who's being very clever about their, uh, their position and the, what the opinion or position that they're trying to put forth, but underlying it are fallacious arguments. So. Something to throw out in the debate club there. Call them a sophist. All right. So we got a, a very general idea of what needed to be done with this project. We are helping the game designers, uh, in essence, test out some values that they want to they want to come up with sets of values for knights and weapons that they would ultimately use in a game. So they're not interested in us writing an entire game, but just enough code for them to test this stuff out. However, following the principle of reuse, uh, they don't want to waste everyone's time by having you create a whole bunch of code that is entirely thrown away. So where possible, they would like you to create some code that's able to be reused in the final application. Uh, the nature of the game is you have a couple knights, they have weapons, they come together simultaneously, and each one there is a possibility of one knight knocking the other knight off the horse as a second factor is every time a knight is using their weapon, they're getting a little bit uh, more exhausted in the form of a reduction in stamina that they possess and once that reaches zero they're considered exhausted and, and cannot participate in the joust any longer. Likewise, if one of the knights, or both of the knights for that matter, either or both, are knocked off their horse, then the joust ends for that reason. Uh, 
I want to talk just a moment at a coding level because one of the, the things we haven't worked with yet is this idea of probabilities and random numbers and so forth. And a, a, when you're dealing with percentages, a very common technique is to not generate, so a percentage is in essence representing a probability between 0 and 1. And uh, you could certainly do it that way, but a, a nice easy substitute is just say you're going to generate a number between 1 and 100 and representing 1% to 100%. And if I say you have a 20% chance of hitting someone, then I generate a random number between 1 and 100, and if that number is between 1 and 20, the hit is successful. If it's 21 through 100, then the hit fails. Right? Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, so the question becomes, well, how do you generate random numbers? And I'll say for another day, the detailed discussion of that. Suffice to say at this point that there are ways to interrogate the operating system for a random number. And what I've done is I've provided code uh, to do that for you. And so all you have to do is use the code I provided uh, in order to generate random numbers. Um, let me see. And that's kind of in the same spirit where I provided code to do the drawing for the hexagons. So same idea there. Okay. And I'll touch a little bit more about what we can and cannot do specifically with that code in, in just a few minutes. Uh, but I wanted to start by... That is in the... Is it a tarball or two separate files? Uh, tarball, yeah. Okay, so whatever, whatever that attached thing is to the project. You just untar it and, and there should be like a random.h and a random.cpp. And as we all know, we include the .h wherever we need to generate random numbers and we always compile the .cpp. All right? Okay. Uh, so let's talk about classes. So we've, we've done a little bit with classes. We've had the web counter project as a class. This is something, a key idea of a class is something that bundles together data with the uh, methods or functions that are operating on that data. So in the web counter our data was simply a single integer representing the number of hits and then the four methods that we had that operated on that data was set, reset, hit, and get. So we need to come up with a, a similar idea here. The first step there is to ask ourselves what classes do we think this project would have? Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to come here. What classes do you think the web project has? So get out your phone or your computer. Yeah, that's right. We fancy this, a computer scientist using uh, computer science here. So, let me show you, if you've never done this before, this is actually a live poll. And and let me do this. All right, so you have two choices. If you have a phone, this is the address that you text to right here, 37607. And what you have to text is you have to text this specific number followed by your response. Now, my question is, what class or classes do you think the web project has? Uh, and so you would, to this, you would type in this number, then you type in something like night. If you have a computer or you have a web browser open on your phone, you can just go to polyv.com slash lecture and you can type in your response at that URL. Um, and do we just say all the different classes that we have? Uh, yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, uh, I guess you would need to put them on one line because I think it's only going to let you respond once, if I recall. Uh, so a lack of testing on my part, we'll soon find out. But yeah, if you think if you can think of two, three, four classes, just separate them by spaces or commas and put them in your response. I'll leave these instructions up for just a moment longer, and then we will all get excited by as as a res it'll, it's kind of like election night. As the results come in, we will see them live.
I don't know about you, but I, I can I can feel that excitement. <laughs> Okay, there seems to be a lot of agreement that knight and weapon. I see stamina, hit, clash, joust. Oh, that's a possibility. Good knight. Knight one, knight two. All right, so... Definitely two that, that we're seeing over and over again here are knight and weapon. So let me start with that, and then I'll come back to some of these others that are listed. So possible classes. Knight. Weapon. And joust was thrown up here. Um... Hello, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. I appreciate you asking. Uh, we have some others here. Stamina, round, horses. All right. Stamina, round, horses. So let me then cut you off. Oops, there we go. And what I will do is I will stop that pull and I will bring up another pull. If you're doing it on the web, same URL. If you're doing it by texting, the address that you're sending the text to is the same. However, I, I don't recall what the number was. I imagine that number is different, 942800. What I'm asking here is what private data do you think the Knight class has? So thinking in terms of C++ classes and thinking in terms of a blueprint, what is every single Knight that you ever create going to have as data? Yeah, all right. I think I think it should be a rule whenever we say stop no no you have to say it loud. <laughs> Pretty face. Okay. That's actually a unique quality to me. That's not generic for every night. <laughs> Okay, and again about me again. So, uh, all right. So, stamina. Everyone seems to think there's stamina. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out another one. So this wasn't necessarily talked about very much, but uh, I, I'd like to be able to differentiate between the different knights a little more easily, other than saying this is the knight with stamina 20 and this is the knight with stamina 30. I'll say this is. George. George and, and Lancelot or something like that. Yes? Would stamina be like a hit point? Right. Okay. So now, now let's, so let's uh, pause on stamina for a little bit and let me stop this pool. Right. Uh, so first let's, let's distinguish between what we had with the first question and what we have turning up here. Here, this, there's a proposition that perhaps stamina should be 
I won't do that anymore. Uh, perhaps its stamina should be a class in and of itself. But this, what this implies is that you're creating some sort of template, some sort of blueprint, where for all the staminas I ever create, these are the properties that a stamina will have. And presumably, stamina is going to have a bunch of data, and there are also going to be some sort of things that you can do with the data. Right? A different view is that stamina is actually not encapsulating a whole bunch of data and operations that you do on the data, but instead stamina is simply an attribute of a knight. And I think when we look at it in these terms, I hope that there's consensus that folks are saying, yes, it makes more sense that stamina is an attribute of every knight that you'll ever create. All right? Now, uh, the question was, is that just a, like a number like hit points. And, and I think based on the reading that we did through the materials and where we're coming, that yes, that would just be a simple number. So the stamina is just a simple number. Whenever a knight uses a weapon in a round, that is what gets reduced. And it's if that particular value for a particular knight hits <coughs> zero or below zero, then that knight is exhausted and the joust ends. Everyone buy into that? All right. Yes. Will stamina affect hit chance? Will stamina affect hit chance? Uh, mm, no. We'll say no. Mm -hmm. What am I looking for? I'm looking for that thingy. This question is regarding the weapon class. What data do you think every weapon has? I'm going to take it off the... I should have done that little that little cluster look to it. I like better. I wonder if it's too late to change that. It's all right. I'll scroll through it. Okay, looking at at some of these that are coming up here. Here we see weapon type. We see type, name of weapon, weapon type. So starting with that, uh, I think that it is a, a good, good idea that the type of the weapon would be an attribute of every weapon you create. So type would be like sword or lance, morning star, mace. We have a uh, hit chance, power of weapon, hit chance, hit chance, accuracy. I think these are these all are speaking to the same thing. Of uh, and I actually like hit chance. We'll just call it hit chance. And in fact, I'll make it a little C plus plus like by putting a little underscore there. Uh, so this would be the probability of this particular weapon successfully hitting the other knight. So maybe for a sword, that number is five. Maybe for a lance, this number is seven. And again, this is using that kind of simplified idea of probabilities, where if it's five and seven, that would represent five or seven percent chance. And you generate a random number between one and 100, and you compare it to the hit chance. And if the hit chance, if the number generated is five or lower, or, or seven or lower, depending on what the number is, then it's considered a hit. Otherwise, it's considered a miss. Yes? Is hit going to be a set number uh, constant, or is that going to be a, vari a variable depending on the weapon as well? So it, it's an attribute of each weapon you create. So this isn't defining what the hit chance is. Hit, hit damage, 
So you've determined that it actually hit it, but how much is it actually going to? Right. So the next question is, well, what does that mean for damage? And that uh, touches on things like strength of weapon, um, power of weapon, and it. it we could put something like amount of damage, but what did we decide about what happens when the other knight is hit by a weapon? They fall off the horse, right? So we had that, the game, at least at this point, as far as the designers are, cur uh, are concerned, has a simplifying assumption where it's not like the computer games that you're accustomed to playing where you have a reservoir of hits and a weapon is only doing partial damage to you, reducing that reservoir. The idea is once you're hit, you're off the horse and it's over. Right? So amount of damage we actually don't need. It's just whether or not that weapon hits. Uh, another one that I see here is uh, stamina cost, stamina usage, stamina to use. I uh, see that quite a bit. I think that, that that's good. I would say um, how about stamina required. So if I'm using a sword, that sword is going to have a stamina required. Who knows what the number is? Maybe it's three. Every single time I use that sword, I have to reduce my own stamina by three. And I'm a knight, right? So I have some stamina that gets reduced. Okay. What about... Uh, let me... Let me, so we've decided stamina is an attribute of knight. Uh, let me table round and joust. How about horses? What's the deal with horses? Where do they come into play in this game? Everybody has one. So let me ask a let me ask a question. Based on what we know about this game, does a horse seem to have a, a large number of attributes and methods in which we operate on the horse? No. no. What is really what is the sole purpose for having horses in the game at all? How, what what role do they serve in the context of the game? Okay, facilitate the clash because because who rides a horse? So what is this then? Is it its own class or is it a what? It's an attribute of knight. So we can do something like on horse. And we can, we can get a little C++-y. Plus what kind of variable do you think that'd be? Uh, yeah, true or false. Boolean is true or false. Either the knight is on that horse or the knight is not on that horse. Yeah? Okay. All right. What do we can do with these two? Uh, what kind of thing do you think a name is? String. Yeah, sure. String. Integer. Oops. Integer. Uh, the hit chance. Uh, I want to do that. I want to keep it simple so that the hit chance is a positive number between one and a hundred, representing a percentage, rather than a, a probability between zero and one. And so the random number will be between 1 and 100 rather than uh, a random number between 0 and 1. So on the, uh, on the type cell, uh, if we're having different weapons take <coughs> different values, it's just going to change their hit chance or stamina required? No, so the, the, right, the, all three of these are intimately connected because all three of these attributes any single weapon will have. So if you have for the type being a sword, it is going to have a certain hit chance and a certain stamina required. And if you have a type as a lance, then its hit chance is likely different, as is its stamina required is likely different than the swords. But where are all these values coming from? Do you have to come up with the values? The the, yeah. Right. Remember that the, the whole reason behind you doing this is the designers want to try out different combinations of statistics, different numbers. So the designers provide all this information. Okay? All right. Uh, these, these are a little bit harder to get our head around. And this is where I want to pause and explore different ways at getting at how knights and weapons work in the game. Okay. 
So what I want to do is I want to actually, in the same sense where at the time I'd gotten Luke and Lottie up here to role play a web counter. Now I don't see anyone in their Ren Faire costume, so I'm just slightly disappointed, but not overly. Uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit warm out to be wearing the the black leather, right? So I I'll give you a pass on that. Um, but I, you could have worn the hat. I mean, really, is it too much to ask? All right. Um, I need not one, not two, but five volunteers. And just park yourselves up here. There's, there's no reason to be embarrassed. It's just going to be on YouTube for the rest of your lives. Just something to show the kids and the grandkids. All right. So why five? Why five? Do I have everyone in here? I do have everyone in here. So rather than using the whiteboard this time, I have created private data that each person could hold close to themselves, all right? And um, I need two dikes, two weapons, and main. I think that we will do it just like, we'll keep the order here, I like the order. Um, it's roughly, it's roughly according to height, which is interesting. I'm gonna make you a knight. I'll give you one of those. I'll make you a knight. I'll give you one of those. You're going to be a weapon. And I'm going to go to the far end, and you can be a weapon as well. Now, uh, go ahead and hold it up so we can see that you can see that the attributes. She needs a pen. Huh? She needs a pen. You need a pen. I don't have to get a pen on the uh, So the attributes are, are, I think, everything we came up with. Uh, for the type of weapon, I don't know, what are a couple weapons? Lance. Lance. A uh, long sword. Nice. Is anyone here named Lance? Okay. Another. I, I would have switched it around to make it work. Go ahead and make your type Lance. What's a What's another one? Long, mace. long sword, mace. You want to just put sword, sword or mace, something that some weapon that's appealing to you there next to type. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to name the knights. I, I found that based on based on history, people tend to choose naughty names. And uh, I don't want any naughty names. So, so this knight, this knight's name is going to be Starry, and this knight's name is going to be Stormy. <laughs> Some people have more sensitivity to certain names than others. Like I, I remember once that my wife got really upset when I used the word puke, but you know that's what her dinner tasted like to me. <laughs> I, I, I'm using a different comedian's material. I didn't make that up. Okay. Um, starry, stormy. Okay. Uh, for your stamina, let's make your stamina. Uh, let's make it nine. And we'll make your stamina. Um, we can make it nine as well. That's fine. And you're both on your horse, so we decided that'll be Boolean. So have both knights say true for on horse. Okay. And um, for the lance, I think that the lance is probably a little bit uh, more difficult to use than the sword. So let's say the stamina required to actually use the lance is... Um, Oh, let's say four. Okay, four. Let's make it five. Let's make it five. I'm just all right. There we go. And the the hit chance for the lance we will say is uh, ten percent. And what we have over here, we'll say the sword's a little easier to use, so we'll say that the stamina required here is four. And the, but it doesn't it doesn't have as high a chance of hitting. So we'll say what do you have ten over there. And we'll just say like uh, I don't know eight percent. All right. 
Now, everyone's wondering at this point, why am I picking on poor Wes here? Uh, he serves no role whatsoever. I needed one person to embarrass. No. Um, the king and judge. <laughs> now, we have our knight, we have one knight class, one weapon class, and then through the magic of constructors and stuff, I can create two knights and two weapons, right? Where have we historically been creating these things? Where did we create the web counter to kind of test it out? Main. Your main. All right. Congratulations. So, uh, where did all the where did all this information that's written down come from? Huh? It's it, I mean, it all gets figured out in Maine, but, but the humans we're asking are the game designers, right? So you can imagine a bunch of C in and C out statements. What is the knight's name? What is the knight's uh, stamina? So on and so forth. And all that's typed in at the keyboard. And then once that return is hit, all these things are created. All right? Now the joust can begin. However, before the joust can, when does the joust end? When a, when a knight falls off the horse or... Standard or the stand is reduced to zero, in which case the knight is exhausted. Okay, so one of the things that's important in coming up with an object-oriented design is try to to uh, describe these in, in contextual terms. So it isn't the joust ends when the knight's stamina goes down to zero. It is the joust ends when the knight is exhausted. Okay, so before we even begin this thing. Wes, our main, actually needs to ask these questions of each of the knights. So, ask, uh, those, ask, ask Starry uh, the question about uh, whether or not they're exhausted. Starry, are you exhausted? No. Okay, and, and so, that's good. Starry, are you exhausted? And the answer is... No, false. Now, how did Starry figure that out? What did Starry do? Stamina. Mm -hmm. Ask the question, give me the question in C++ terms now. If stamina does not equal zero return. Right, and, ma and maybe it, since this can get below greater zero, than, so yeah. if, if, uh, if stamina than. is greater than or equal to zero, excuse me, let's do it the other way around. Are, are you exhausted? If stamina is less than or equal to zero, return true, else return false. Yes? Mm. Ask it of the other night. Stormy, are you exhausted? No. Say true or false. Oh, false. False. All right. <laughs> and and what if what if uh, Stormy had come back with true? Then what would Wes do? Wes would be done with the joust. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Declare Stormy the victor. Yes. That's right. Uh, but now you need to ask the other question of each of the knights. Okay, Stormy, are you on your horse? True. Stormy, are you on your horse? True. Okay. Wait. Round two. It's, it's a little bit like going to a Broadway theater show. Um, <laughs> now the joust can begin. Neither knight is exhausted. Both knights are on their horse. So now, what, is, what does Wes, what does Maine need to do when, uh, to get the joust going? What question needs to be asked of Starry? Huh? Uh, that, more generally, so if you're, imagine you're out there on the joust field, and you're the king, and then you're going to say, hi, no, you're going to say, joust, or, or wield your weapon, or something like that, right? Let's go with wield, I like wield. So go ahead and ask Starry to wield. Starry, wield your weapon. When Starry's asked to wield his weapon, uh, what needs to be, what needs to occur when Starry is asked to use the weapon? Reduce stamina, right? Every time Starry uses the lance, that's going to require some stamina, and Starry's going to lose some stamina. Five. How much? Look at that. You just said five, but how did how did Starry know that? What quest, what does Starry need to do to find out how much to reduce the stamina by? Just ask the weapon. What question are you going to ask the weapon? How much stamina? How much stamina do I need? What is the stamina required to use you, so Mr. Lance? It says five. You need five stamina. Yeah, All right. I'm not going to say, oh, I have 
So the question is asked of the weapon, how much stamina is required? The weapon answers with five, and now what do you do? I'm going to subtract five from the nine. All right, go for it. One. Now, you actually, you do the math in your head or whatever and change it on your piece of paper there. Okay. So that was five, four. Should I just cross that one out? Yeah. All right. So that was the first of two things that are done. What is the second thing? We need to find out if the weapon hit, yes? So ask a question of the weapon. No, 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 the lance, the right? You're, oh, you're, you've been, what's my percentage chance of hitting? You have a 10% chance of hitting. Okay. Mm, that, it's interesting. There, so, well, you found out if there's a 10% chance of hitting. What are you going to do with that 10%? <laughs> I'm going to do a random... You're going to roll some dice and see if it's 10%? 10%. Uh, that's one way of doing it, and I want to get back to that in a later class on this project, but right now I'm going to force it a certain way. I want you to ask uh, a more general question of the Lance. Ask the question of the Lance, did you hit? Um, did I hit? Yeah, there you go. And now when you're asked if you hit, what do you do? Roll dice to figure out if... The 10% was activated, if so. All right. I'm my own code. I'm going to be the random number generator. Okay? There are exactly two things you can do with me. If you look at that code, remember the things that you, what are the, what are the things that you, let me back up, what are the things that you can do with the web counter? Get, get hit, reset, set. That's the four things you can do with the web counter. There are only two things you can do with me. One is, you, and it's implied with web counter that we didn't count, you can create me. Okay? So you, and I'm created. Now the next, the only other thing you can do with me is say get. And when you say get, I will give you a random number between 1 and 100. All right? So Starry asked the Lance, did you hit? Now the Lance is going to... Talk to me and say, Good. did I hit? No, no, no. You don't, uh, there are only two things you can do. You can create me, and let's assume you create me. What are you? No, I, okay, so, you, so you, you create me. Let's assume the creation has worked. So I'm here, all right? Okay. Good. All right. I have to get you. So what yeah, are you? Yeah, get. That's literally what you do. You turn to me and you say, get. It is just like I turned to either Luke or Lottie and said, get, reset, set, right? The Lance is turning to me and saying, get. Okay, and what I do is I give you back a number between 1 and 100, 46. Now, what are you going to do with that 46? I'm going to decide if it's, or say whether or not it's within the chance that we need, if it's above a 90%, essentially. Right. Let, let's, do, let's do the lower end. So if I okay. give you a number between, in this case, you're comparing, what number did I give you? 40, 46. 46. You're going to compare 46 with 10. And if 46 is 10 or less, then you need to answer true to the question, did you hit? If the number is above 10, then you have to return false, false right? So you ask the question, did you hit? Did hit? False. False. And then what are you going to do? I'm going to turn back to and tell him false. Exactly. Now, um, back up. How did this whole thing start? What? How did Wes kick this off? Oh, he checked first to see if we were... Oh, he checked to see if we... Wheel, right? So think about it. There's a lot of stuff happening here. Note how beautifully that's hidden from Wes. All Wes does is turn to Starry and say, Wheel, and then just waits a few minutes and then comes back to the true or false as to whether or not the weapon hit, yes? Okay. Let's do it the other way. Sorry. Wheel. Storm the wheel. Alright. So what does it cost to use? Four. Yeah. Eighty-two. Yeah. False. False. Okay. See how that works? Let's do it. Uh, what number do we have here? Your stamina required is five. 
Okay, so both both knights have had a chance to hit each other. Neither one did. It's time to start a new round. But before you start a new round, what questions do we need to ask? Check to see if the other stands up. Right. Go ahead and ask those questions. Okay. Starry, what is your stamina? No, Are that's not the question. Do you have stamina? Are you still on your horse? Are you exhausted? Are you exhausted? There you go. And when you're asked that question, what do you do? I'm going to check to see if I have this above zero. Yes. And if it is, you're going to return false. Okay, good, good. Okay. And then you can ask the other question right now if you want. Sorry, are you on your horse? And then I'm going to check to see if I'm up well. Yeah, you're just going to check the on horse value. And it's, it's true, true, so you say true. Back to what? The main. And then main turns to Stormy, Stormy. and says, uh, Are you exhausted? False. Are you on your horse? True. Okay. Every, all the questions were answered correctly in order to start a whole nother round. So let's start a whole nother round. Go ahead. Starry wheeled. Wheeled, yeah. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to check with you to see if I have enough stamina points. Well, so <clears throat> we established yesterday that as long as he, as, even if he doesn't have the full five, as long as he has greater than zero, he can still wield, correct? That's right? correct. That's as correct. long as you're greater than zero, you can still wield. Okay. Am I, am I greater than zero? Yes. So that's, and then now I'm going to ask him if. Well, well you yeah. don't have to ask a question if you're greater than zero. So, decrement, right. so you have to decrement five. Okay. So what, let's back up. What was the question that you asked the Lance? I asked Lance if um, how many points across the. What is this? What is your stamina required? What's required, right? Or you can say get stamina required. Get, oh yeah, get so Lance points. replied with five. five. Now that five is taken for Starry to reduce his own stamina to zero. Should we go negative? Negative one. Oh, you want, okay. Yeah. Just just do it as simple as arithmetic rather than holding it at zero. Okay. So that's fine. Negative one. Okay. Okay, so you you ask get stamina required. What's the second thing you ask? Um, I'm going to ask how many. Um, how, what's my chance of hitting? No, I, don't, I want to find out if I hit. Okay, so I'm going to. Did I hit? Hit. Uh, eight. Yes. True. So and then I'm going to use true. All right. Now, this is the moment that Wes has been waiting for. Asking the question. Wheel. Wheel. Wheeled, right? And in between there, are you exhausted and um, are you on your horse? Uh, if the answer comes back true, then what should Wes do? Let's see if I get knocked off the horse. What happens when, if, if Starry's weapon successfully hits Stormy, then what should happen to Stormy? You turn and you use a stern voice and you tell Stormy, unhorse yourself. <laughs> and, and you gotta wag the finger. Stormy, unhorse yourself. Now what does Stormy do when that is told of Stormy? Return false. false. Not return false. Change his false. Change his private data on horse variable to false. Mm -hmm. Okay? Alright. Now what? Yes. Uh, we just went through the round, and you gave that knight a chance to hit and not that knight. Should we give them equal chances? We should give them equal chances because the 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 designers said that the knights come together simultaneously, right? Now we are not dealing with parallel programming, so the question is, well, how do you make things occur simultaneously? And the, the answer is, you just give both a chance to wield their weapons. It's the same idea. If I gave you a single die and I said, roll two dice and tell me what their sum is, you don't throw up your hands and say, I can't do that. What you do is you roll that single die two times, you add them together and tell me the answer. It's as if you rolled two dice at once, right? So just so as main can ask both knights to wield before asking if they're exhausted or if they're on their horse. And so we've done the first night. Even though Starry has knocked Stormy off the horse, Stormy, had, Stormy hasn't had a chance to wield yet in this round. So you can turn to Stormy and... Okay. Stormy, wield. Okay. Uh, how much, what's the stamina required? Four. Did I hit? Okay. 99. False. False. All right. We now we're ready for another round. Ask the four questions. Okay. Uh, Starry, are you exhausted? 
Um, true. Okay. Sorry. And you can and you can ask the other question. You can say, "Are you on your horse?" And you say, "Yes." And you ask, "Are you exhausted?" Tell me, are you exhausted? False. Are you on your horse? True. Uh, false. Now, two of those four questions came back bad. All we need is for one of those questions to come back as we're not expecting, and the whole thing's off, right? But in this case, uh, we had more than one answer in a way that would end the joust, which is fine. And uh, so then main is done looping, ball out of the loop, and the joust is over. Okay? And like a Greek tragedy, both contestants have fallen to the ground for one reason or another. <laughs> All right? So uh, that does it for today's lesson. Have a wonderful spring break, and we will pick this up a week from Monday. Yeah, so it yeah. Be a draw <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It's it's may even more of a comedy. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, there's a pilot on there. Thanks. Thank you. So exhaustion and stamina, uh, exhaustion and on your horse are an equal priority? Yes. Okay. And both, both are enough to end the joust.